During 1922 and 1923, the U.S. Navy built its first rigid airship, the Shenandoah. Based on a German design, the Shenandoah was enormous, nearly 690 feet long and weighing 36 tons. Equipped with five 300 horsepower Packard engines, she had a range of 5,000 miles at a maximum speed of 60 knots. Her lift came from 2.1 million cubic feet of helium, unlike the German airships that used hydrogen. Her first flight occurred on September 4, 1923, the first of 56 flights that would span a two-year period. On September 2nd, 1925, the Shenandoah was scheduled to leave her home base at Lakehurst, New Jersey on a goodwill tour en route to an air show appearance in St. Louis, Missouri. After checking weather forecasts for the intended route and finding a forecast of thunderstorms, Commander Zachary Lansdowne, an Ohio native from Greenville, Ohio, and the Navy's most experienced airship captain, recommended to his superiors that they wait out the weather. Unfortunately, he was overruled and the Shenandoah left as scheduled. In the early hours of September 3rd, the Shenandoah was over southeastern Ohio, fighting turbulence and high winds from storms. By most reports, the giant airship was being tossed around almost totally out of control, caught in updrafts, and at one point almost standing vertically on her tail. With the ship's structure being wrenched and twisted by the force of the storm, the crew ultimately lost control of the ship, resulting in the hull of the Shenandoah breaking apart into two sections and her control gondola cabled into position under her nose being torn away. The control gondola, with 13 souls on board, impacted the ground on farmland in Noble County, Ohio, just north of Caldwell, on a farm owned by the Gamory family. All 13, including Commander Zachary Lansdowne, on board that gondola, died. That site is now marked as site number one. Approaching crash site number two, where the main structure of the Shenandoah came to rest. This would be the site that the rear two-thirds of the ship crashed to the earth right up against this hillside here to our left. And the yellow brick 
that you can see out through the field represents the alignment of that rear two-thirds section. With the remaining 30 crew members still aboard the two broken sections of the Shenandoah's Hall, the rear two-thirds of the airship drifted to the southwest, the crew carefully bleeding off the helium, landed that section at a position just west of present-day Interstate 77. That site now marked as site number two. All crew members aboard the rear two-thirds of the Shenandoah survived. We're about a half a mile or so as the crow flies from the initial breakup point of the Shenandoah that morning in a thunderstorm. Site one was where the ship broke in two and the command gondola that was suspended beneath the ship that you can see here broke away at site number one. Where we're at, and this is probably the most remarkable site as far as the visual aspect of it, this is where the rear two-thirds of the Shenandoah ended up. And it's outlined, as you're seeing on the video, by these yellow concrete blocks. It gives you an idea of the size of the Shenandoah. As the rear of the airship was touching down about a half a mile from the breakup point, the nose section was continuing to drift for several miles to the southwest, at times climbing back to an altitude of 1,500 to 2,000 feet. The crew was carefully venting off the helium and throwing down lines in hopes of dragging something on the ground. Finally, farmer Ernest Nichols was able to grab one of those lines and secure it around the tree, bringing the nose section to the ground. Unfortunately, one of the crew members in the nose section died when he was reportedly thrown from a rope while he was trying to get down to the ground to secure that line. 